Hi there. My name is Grace, and I'm a believer that everyone in this world has a story that they'd like to share. And in today's video, I'll be sharing with you one of my stories. And this is the story of my family, a family that immigrated from China to the US before I was born. I really wanted to pursue this story because I have lived a very privileged life in the US growing up. I never really had to make really big sacrifices, but my family did. They left everything they knew in their small village in China to come to the US, a place where they didn't know the language, they didn't have a lot of resources, and they had to build from the ground up. I really wanted to showcase what their life was like before they achieved the American dream. So today I will be shedding light on their ancestral village in China so that we can begin to understand the stories of those who walked before us. On a cold winter night in 1999, I was born to two parents who immigrated to the US from China and shortly after my brother was born. I was born to a very proud Fujonese family and despite having grown up in the US, my family spoke to me solely in Fujonese as I was growing up. Being Fujonese and speaking the language didn't translate well to growing up in a town where I was oftentimes the only kid who was Chinese. I got the question, where are you from, a lot. And to that, I would ask my parents, where are we from? And my parents would point out on a map, oh, this is where we're from. And so we eventually did take a trip to China in 2006 so that my family could introduce us to where our ancestors are from. But my brother and I were very young and we weren't proud of being Chinese at the time, so we don't remember much from that trip. But in 2023, we finally took a trip back to China because my grandparents really wanted to show their grandkids their ancestral village before it was too late. So now, welcome to Changbing in the Mawei district of Fuzhou. Dating back to the Tang Dynasty, this traditional village is home to 43 houses with distinct Southeast Asian architecture brought back by overseas Chinese that combines Chinese and Western architecture styles. Every building is a testimony of struggle and resilience filled with the nostalgia of villagers who missed their hometowns while overseas. Since the late Qing Dynasty, many villagers embarked on a treacherous journey overseas to look for better opportunities. Therefore, this village is mostly vacant now, but there are a few elderly people living here. And the first people we'll meet who are living here at the moment are my grandparents. So this is the house that belongs to my grandma and grandpa. It was built in the 1950s to 60s, and the original owner has actually immigrated to the US a while back. And because of that, he sold this home to my grandpa. This house was here when my dad was growing up. So he was around seven or eight years old at the time and he spent uh, several years here before he moved to Hong Kong. And it was so surreal being able to go to the home that my family has so much history tied to. You know, my dad told me that his grandmother um, would babysit him and my aunt in this home and this is the room that my dad used to sleep in when he was younger um, and now my grandparents sleep here when they come visit um, and my dad is just so excited because you know he's pointing out the windows to say that oh this was his view when he wake up in the morning and so it's about that time, we're getting a little hungry, so we're going to go downstairs and see what grandma has prepared for us. Being that we were visiting from so far away, our grandma made these Fujo red wine chicken noodles. If you thought that was the only thing our grandma served us, you'd be wrong. She also served us some spring rolls in which the filling is made out of bean sprouts, green onions, bamboo shoots, and smoked and dried bean curd. And it is a really healthy spring roll. She also served us some shrimp, jellyfish, a second kind of shrimp, 
this stir-fried rice cake with crab soup that has lamb, daikon, and as well as some fish soup. And we wrapped up with dessert, which is called C. And it is the glutinous rice ball covered in sweet soybean and sesame powder. Absolutely delicious. So soft. So crunchy. <laughs> as well as some sweet sticky rice to go along with it. Our grandma is truly the best cook that I ever grew up with and I'm so grateful that she's still with us and still so excited every time she serves us her homemade food. With all this talk about food, I realized that my family was not always abundant when it came to the food that they had on their dinner table. In fact, they come from a very rural farming village that is surrounded by mountains. And even during the time when my family was living here, food was scarce. It was difficult for them to provide enough food for their entire families. And that was one of the many reasons why they immigrated. Here we are walking through the village. A lot of very different type of architecture. The very colorful windows, sometimes colorful doors. What makes this village unique is that this village has a lot of overseas investment. Because poverty was common in this village, people went abroad to look for new opportunities. And then people would send money back home to the village, to their families, and be able to fully move the entire family abroad. One such example of a family that did this was the family of my friend, Tammy. So let me introduce you to her now. Hi, I'm Tammy. I am currently working in the same company as Grace. I was assigned to be Tammy's mentor. And we were super excited when we met for the first time because we were like, oh, we're both Chinese American. That's cool. Honestly, all of the similarities and coincidences just kept on going and going. And then we stumbled upon um, the fact that our families used to be neighbors. Like our grandparents literally lived right next to each other in a small town in Fuzhou and it's like insane. Like yeah. our grandmas were practically like besties, pretty much. Right. Right? Yeah. We learned that our grandmas back in the village in Fuzhou used to make wine together and yeah. that uh, Tammy's mom and my aunt also used to play together when they were kids. And like the funniest thing is, is that like we didn't even know each other until what, like four five months ago mm -hmm. our families like both kind of took their own path to you know like follow their american dream like do their own restaurants like my family's from the midwest kansas city and i think your family like settled in delaware was it yes and so completely different lives yes until like now right and somehow we met through working together and our families are literally from the same exact village. It's just amazing how, you know, work brought us together, but now we're tied together through our family stories. Yay. <laughs> so Tammy and I, we share a very similar story with our families and we also share the same last name. So both of our last names are Yang and this is the Yang family ancestral temple. Many families who have the last name Yang have donated money to this temple, and that includes my very own grandpa. His name is up here on the board, and it is so nice to come back and see the legacy that he's left here. The legacy that my family leaves is one that shows how much hard work and resilience can result in success. Many families from this village left everything they knew to go abroad to countries where they oftentimes had to endure very difficult conditions to be able to make money and send it back home. Even when the Fudunis go abroad, they do not forget their roots. They remember where they come from and they send money back to have their family's history be preserved in a way 
for future generations to be able to learn from. Now that we have visited the Yang family ancestral temple, we will be visiting a second temple. To get to that temple, we are climbing this mountain and along the way, our grandpa is getting really excited. He's telling us about how he used to climb this mountain all the time when he was a little boy. Speaking of childhood memories, we stumbled upon a very unique tree. The reason this tree is so special is because in an episode of Journey to the West, one of the characters, specifically the pig, was actually tied to this tree. We finally made it to the top of the mountain and here is the view. As you can see, this village and township is not just farms, it's also surrounded by mountains. And that tunnel that you see allows trains to pass through the mountain. But when my family was living here, that did not exist. So that led to challenges in leaving this area to go to the main part of the city of Fuzhou. Now we are entering the temple and it's very elaborately designed with a beautiful altar and a big Buddha at the top. And it is a really beautiful spot. Another type of sacred building that we went to was the ceremonial hall that my grandparents got married in. Here's a photo of their engagement. So my grandparents have always been around as my primary caretakers when I was young. And so it's really cool to be able to go back and see the building that they got married in. My grandpa is very excited to talk about the history of this building and how it was not just used for weddings, but also sadly funerals too. But it has a lot of history here. This building is over 400 years old. So we are definitely standing where there's been a lot of history. While my grandparents got married here, my parents got married in the US. And so now we will visit my mom's childhood home that she lived in before she moved to the US. This is my mother's house. So this house was built in 1968 by my mom's uncles and it is the home that my mom, her siblings, her mother, her father, her grandparents um, grew up in. And my mom is pointing to the bedroom window on the upper floor which used to be her room. Oh my god, you slept on that? The water to let it cool down, and the, and the rock is cool down. I feel really comfortable. Oh, oh yeah. Mommy, mommy, room. Mommy, downstairs room. Oh, really? That's mommy's kitchen. Oh. Somebody leave right now. Nobody yeah. was here because everyone went abroad. Oh, this is a built in clothes washing board. Right here? Oh, wow. Built in 1968. Child memory. Mommy, that. What kind of store? Uh, Like the like convenience store. This is the place where they have a. like. Uh, uh, movie, movie, the angel, the bomb, movies, uh, drama, the Georgina. Oh, thank you so much for joining us as we explored my family's ancestral village. Now we are headed back to the city. Thank you so much, everyone, for watching our video. We hope you loved watching it. We have a special gift for all of you. Leave your comments below for a chance to win a free postcard from beautiful Fuzhou. We will personally mail the postcard to you. So leave a comment below telling us where your family is from, if you've been to your family's ancestral hometown, and what that experience was like. We'd love to hear from you.